Hi. Hi. Welcome to Birmingham Vineyard. Um, it's the online. It's the ten o'clock online service. My name is Cap, and I'm Jo, and we're site pastors here at Birmingham Vineyard. Yeah, as a church, we exist to follow Jesus, live life to the full, and to make a difference wherever we can. The moment a lot of that is happening online so if you want to check out our media platforms or our website you can do at birminghamvineyard.com we hope that you've been enjoying um, our online services over the last couple of weeks uh, and we've really uh, enjoyed big, uh, as the services have become more interactive and the live chats that we've been able to have even this morning with some of you uh, we appreciate that some of you still might be on our YouTube channel, uh, which is fine. Um, but if you'd like to be slightly more interactive, uh, please uh, feel free to move over to uh, the Birmingham Vineyard dot online dot church. Uh, and you can be uh, chatting away um, with us uh, live. Yeah. So this morning, what we're going to do in a minute, we're going to focus ourselves onto God and we're going to pray. We're going to go into some uh, worship um, uh, through song. Then we are going to be doing some communion. So now is your opportunity to go and get your bread and your wine or your juice and crackers. And we're going to be hearing from John this morning, who is going to be continuing our series on the Beatitudes. After that, there's going to be an opportunity for you to pause and think about what uh, God might be saying to you and consider how you want to respond to that. And there's going to be an opportunity for you to have live prayer at the end of the service if you request it. Once the online service is finished, we're inviting you over to our Zoom chat where you get an opportunity to see each other's faces as well as chat. Um, if you have not already received through email the link for the Zoom chat, then if you just make a request on the online chat now live, someone will get that to you. We're going to start our service uh, with some worship, but uh, as we do that, let's uh, just focus uh, our minds. Um, I appreciate it's slightly strange um, worship the, the, in, in this time with a screen in front of you instead of a, a live band um, and physical people around you. Um, but let's just focus um, on our Creator God. Um, and I'm going to start by just reading a bit of uh, Psalm 63. Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you, my soul thirsts for you, my body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you and I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name I will lift up my hands, my soul will be satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips my mouth will praise you. Lord God, we just invite your Holy Spirit to be with us today. We, we thank you for your sacrifice at the cross that has given us grace and mercy and freedom.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence with us. And we continue our worship now as we come to celebrate communion and as we remember the sacrifice that you made so that we could know freedom and friendship with God. Friends, if you've got uh, juice or wine or some bread, we just want to celebrate this moment right now. This is our chance to remember the incredible love that God has for every one of us. Communion is a moment for us to pause and look at our own lives and bring the things that are our failings to God and ask his forgiveness. But it's a moment of celebration. It's when we celebrate that we're adopted into a family, not because of our merit or our hard work, but because of God's incredible, extravagant love for us. And that's what this simple moment recalls. It recalls the sacrifice of Jesus for each one of us. He paid the highest price so that we could become friends of God, that we could be forgiven and we could live free. So let's just reflect as we uh, listen to these words. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the supper, he took the cup of wine and he gave thanks. He gave it to them and he said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's just pause in our homes, wherever we are right now, just to celebrate, to take the bread and the wine, the crackers and the juice, and remember the incredible love of God for every one of us. Thanks so much for joining us today. It's really great to be able to gather like this. And a special welcome if you're here for the first time. Please do just pop to that connect button at the side there or at the top of the screen and somebody in our team can personally welcome you. We're so glad you're here. We would like to say a massive thank you to everybody who gives regularly to the life of the church. You are enabling us to uh, reach more people every day and to continue to reach out to our city creatively during this really uncertain time. If you'd like to give online, you can either click on the button at the side or you can head to bvc.so forward slash giving and uh, all the details will be there for you. Now, we have an exciting date for you to put in your diaries. Saturday the 23rd of May is the... Big quiz. Woo! The big quiz is going to go online this month. So you'll find all the details on the church website. You can start mugging up now on... General knowledge. General knowledge, newspaper, sport, music all the kinds of different um, quiz sections that you've become accustomed to. Start gathering your family, your friends, your housemates. And if you're on your own, that's completely fine too. We'll join you up into a team and you can meet some new people online. So do keep that date in your diary. It's going to be no less fun and no less competitive than normal. And uh, we're definitely going to be there and start forming a team. So, look, so looking forward to it. Yeah. Do you know, we're here as a church to um, follow Jesus, to live life to the full and to make a difference. And we're all doing that making a difference piece mm -hmm. in different ways. Yeah. And in this middle part of our service, we tend to focus on somebody in their role or what they're doing. And we're delighted today to hear from Anne. So let's go over and chat with Anne today. Hey Anne, it's so lovely of you to join us and to tell us what you're up to. So I know that you've been super busy since lockdown started. Tell us some of the things that have, have kept you busy. Yeah, okay. Well, it was lovely to see you guys as well. Um, well, um, going back to November, I live in a sort of rectangle, which is really conducive to getting to know your neighbours. Mm -hmm. And two doors up from me in November... Um, an Italian family arrived and I happened to be outside when they arrived and we managed to actually talk using translation with with phones which was I don't know Italian so there we go very um, and 
they had come from Rome. Uh, they love Rome, didn't want to come, but there was no work there. So they came here and um, I, I didn't see them at all after that. They got two boys, lovely boys, um, went to school across the road. And of course, then lockdown came. And a couple of weeks into lockdown, I thought, hmm, I wonder what's going on there. I had a bit of a prompt. So um, I waited for the boys to come out and play football. And I went over to one of them and I said, has daddy got work? And he said, no. So I knew what to do because I, God had already prompted me. So, so I, I put an envelope through their door that night. And because everybody in our little um, close is on WhatsApp, I'd sorted that out. I phoned everybody up. I explained the situation to them and I said, you do exactly what you would like. I know what I'm meant to be doing, but um, please feel free to do nothing or whatever you feel is, is right for you to do. And so that has continued really um, from there on in. But um, I had my prayer partner around um, maybe a couple of weeks after that. And she works for uh, Reach Out Network. And um, it was the day that M&S in town had shut down and they'd inundated them with M&S food. So she asked me whether this family might appreciate some of the M&S food. So they got two massive boxes of meat and cheese and veg and fruit and all sorts of really lovely things. So that was just God's provision as well. That was really good. Absolutely. So that's one thing. And then um, some of you may remember that we were asked if we'd like to volunteer for the NHS. So um, I did do that. But when they, when they looked at my age, they said, well, the only thing you can do is phone. You're not allowed to do anything else. It's fine. So um, they gave me um, five people to phone every week. And um, I listened to these people. They're all different ages with different things wrong. They're not just the elderly. Um, and I've got to know them quite well, really. But with every one of them, I just say, look, I'm a Christian. Is there anything I can pray for you? And they're all of them really fearful. So I'm able to actually pray for each one of them every week. Um, and then the other thing that um, I'm involved in is um, debt counselling. And I, I phone three of my um, debt um, people every week and see how they're doing, see whether you need a food bag. Um, and they also, I will pray for them every week. So that's really good. And then I've got one little friend, she's a lot younger, um, and I, uh, I actually visit her every week because she's not in a good place, and she gave her life to Jesus, I should think, about, oh, three months ago. Yeah. And uh, because we can't meet up, I sit in my car, she sits in her porch, and we do this very weird Bible study, you know, across... <laughs> from the pavement to her house. And we do that every week. It's what she wants to do. So um, it's really good. So I'm not observing the rules, really. But, um, you <laughs> no, know. You are just about. Well, it sounds like you are. And thank you so much for telling us what you're up to. Okay. And uh, okay. we will pray for you. And just thank you for the way that you're making a difference. Let's pray for Anne. Father, thank you for uh, Anne's fearless and courageous reaching out into her community. I pray that we would all be responsive to the nudges of the Holy Spirit, the little shoulder taps, when you tell us, do this or go here or mm. pop money over there. Yeah. Father, would we be a responsive people who reach out with the love of Jesus into our city, into our neighbourhoods during these days? Thank you for your presence with us. Amen. Amen. And we're delighted that today we're carrying on in our series in Beatitudes. So I'm going to hand over right now to John, who's going to carry on the series for us. Hey. John, it's over to you. Thank you, Andrew and Rosie. Hi, everyone. My name is John, and I'm the worship pastor here at Birmingham Vineyard. I want to start today by asking this question. Can you think of a time when you were desperately hungry or desperately thirsty? What was that like? For me, I had an amazing opportunity a number of years ago to go to Nepal to spend some time trekking in the Himalayas. We had amazing guides called Sherpas who uh, were there to help us on our trek, to cook for us and so on. It was such a blessing to have good food cooked for us and they were incredible helpers. However, the food they cooked was their local food and not the food that we were used to. So we spent the whole three weeks longing for the food that we were used to. And as we walked, we'd, we'd talk about what meal we were most looking forward to having uh, when we completed the trek. 
we were lacking our normal food and so we desired it, we longed for it. After we finished the trek, we travelled back to a large city and went to a steakhouse for dinner and it was the single most delicious thing that I have ever eaten in my entire life. Maybe you can think of a similar experience in your life. Just cast your mind back. What did that feel like? Well, today we're going to be looking at some of Jesus' words that speak about our hunger and thirst. These words are part of the Beatitudes, which themselves are part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, which in effect was his manifesto on life in the context of the kingdom of God arriving on earth through him. These words were revolutionary when he first spoke them, and still to this day they challenge our ideas of life and thought patterns. Today we'll be looking at the fourth statement of the Beatitudes, which is found in Matthew 5 verse 6. So let's read that together. It says this, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. So as we begin, let's just be honest with ourselves and honest with God. What are you hungering for right now? And I don't mean a nice piece of cake. In this time of isolation, lockdown, uncertainty, what are you longing for? Let's be open to Jesus prompting us about that during this time. So let's break down these words of Jesus to find what he means. Just as in previous weeks, Jesus had many people groups in mind as he spoke these statements. As we looked at in the first week, Jesus said, blessed are the poor, by which he meant those who experience a lack, both materially and spiritually. When Jesus said, blessed are the meek, he meant both those humbled by oppressive circumstance and those humble, humbly seeking God. And it's the same this week. Jesus had two groups of people in mind as he spoke these words. We're going to explore these two meanings together. So let's begin by looking at the first part of our verse, which says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst. We already briefly thought of what that means just a second ago, but notice Jesus doesn't say blessed are those who hunger and thirst for food. Jesus meant a different kind of hunger. Jesus was talking about an emotional and spiritual hunger. We started off by recalling a time when we were hungry. Let's quickly re revisit that. How did that feel? Maybe you woke up in the middle of the night absolutely parched. How did it feel to desperately desire a drink? Well, in these words, Jesus was speaking to those who have the same level of hunger for righteousness. The Psalms help to connect how it feels to physically thirst to how we spiritually thirst. Psalm 42 says, As the deer pants for water, so my soul thirsts for you, O Lord. And Psalm 63, I thirst for you as in a dry and parched land where there is no water. These helpful images of desperation help us to picture the type of hunger that Jesus was talking about. Jesus meant longing, longing for a deep and unmet need. He meant the way that we hunger and thirst for our deepest desires, the all-consuming desires of our hearts that can't be ignored. So what was Jesus referring to? Let's read our passage again. He said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Now, if you're anything like me, you're probably thinking, what on earth does righteousness even mean? Well, as I've said, there are a couple interpretations to these words of Jesus. The first one is nicely summarised by R.T. France, as he uses the New English Bible's version of this verse. It says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst to see right prevail. As we look out to the world, we see so many situations where, the, where what's right just doesn't happen. Have you ever seen a situation and just your first thought is, that's not right, that ought to be different? I read a headline this last week that said, single mum with just 71 pence living on bread diet so that she could feed her kids a balanced meal during the coronavirus crisis. And the first thought that raised in my heart was just, that is not right. That shouldn't be how the world works. The word righteousness is often translated in this context as right relationships. God designed us to exist in right relationship, right relationship with him, with others and with the whole world. Free from exploitation, from manipulation, from greed and from pushing others down. So those who hunger and thirst for righteousness are those who see a lack of righteousness, a lack of rightness 
in their relationships and the relationships around them. To live with righteousness is to live with faithfulness and goodness in your relationships with others and in your relationship with God. The people that Jesus was speaking to were those who had broken relationships with people around them and with God. He was speaking to people who, no matter how hard they tried, just couldn't get it all together and act right in their relationships. I know some of us here today have been hurt by, in the past by relationships, by people not doing relationships right and harming us in the process. I'm also sure that many of us at some point have unintentionally acted unrighteously in relationships. Which one of us hasn't at some point burnt bridges, made mistakes or treated others unfairly because of our own pain and felt need? Relationships have been put under even more stress during this time of isolation, either because of so much time apart or excessive time together. I'm sure we've all felt that to some extent. Perhaps as I'm speaking, Jesus is just dropping something into your mind. Maybe a mistake that you've made in a relationship or a person that has wronged you in a relationship. How is Jesus inviting you to step forward in pursuing righteousness in that situation? As for our relationships with God, there is nothing that we could have ever done or could ever do to restore our relationship with him. We are, we are separated from God because of sin, a condition of the human heart. But the good news is that God has acted decisively to bring us back into right relationship with him by sending Jesus to die for us and raising him again from the grave. All we need to do to restore a right relationship with God is to come to him and accept him. And you can do that at any time. Another side to this is those things that are outside of our control. As we look into the world, we see mistreatment, abuse, manipulation, exploitation, from one person to another, from one culture to another, from one society to another, I'm sure we can all relate to seeing those things and longing for things to be different. And that is the second part of what Jesus is saying. Blessed are those who long for justice, for themselves and for others. Blessed are those who cannot sit by and be okay with these things happening. Blessed are those who take notice and who are disturbed to their core when they see them. Why? Because as Tim Mackey puts it, they're blessed because they notice something that God notices. They notice that not all is well in the world that God has made and that God is gonna do something about it. He's gonna bring his kingdom. You know, God is a God of justice. Now justice in the Bible means to make right. And it's important to recognize that the Bible doesn't mean taking revenge, but instead means waiting for God and trusting in him he is justice and he will bring about his justice where there has been injustice. In other words, he will make wrong things right. And that means both social justice, you know, justice to the physical and practical issues that we see in the world in front of us and spiritual divine justice. And we can be sure that God will move as he has promised in Psalm 103 verse six to work righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. So if you're currently longing for an oppressive situation around you to change, Jesus is saying to you that you're blessed. Or if you're looking out and you see things that aren't right and you're longing for right to prevail, Jesus says that you will be blessed. Or if you look at your life and see righteousness missing from your relationships, Jesus is saying to you, seek it, seek righteousness. And as you find it, you're blessed. God is righteous. God is faithful to his promise and to his word, and he has promised his blessing. But it's not just down to God to do all of this. As is so often the case in our faith, Jesus invites us to represent him and to be part of the solution, to take part in bringing God's kingdom to the earth. We can not only long for righteousness, but we can also act with righteousness. This was the other meaning of Jesus' statement. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst to live right. I think we can probably all relate to what St. Paul wrote in Romans 7 verse 15. He said, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. 
There are so many times in our lives when we choose the wrong course of action. We do the wrong thing or we neglect to do something that we should do. It can sometimes be quite discouraging to see how Jesus lived and know that that is the standard for how we should live. Sometimes we can feel so far from that. Recently, for me, God has been highlighting uh, even the small things that don't follow his example. You know, a, a short moment of impatience with people, uh, being short in an interaction with someone, a thought of greed or judgment. It's these small things that are all opportunities that God gives me and gives you to turn to him, to ask for his forgiveness and to hunger and thirst again for righteousness to hunger and thirst for him to lead us in his right ways. And this is important because as we act rightly, we become a transforming force towards righteousness. When we react with righteousness, we bring some of God's kingdom to the earth. When someone treats us unfairly, but we respond with right living, with rightness, with the right course of action, we are representing Jesus and bringing righteousness into the world. All we need to do, just as I mentioned before, is to come to him in order to restore our right relationship with God and to allow his loving presence to change our hearts. Sometimes we think of obeying God as turning away from particular desires. And to start with, that's how it might feel, but really God is doing a deeper work in us. As we spend more time with him, our old desires begin to fade and we begin to actually desire what God desires. Our appetite for the old decreases and God gives us a new appetite. How might you need to change your spiritual diet, your routines, so that coming to God isn't something that happens now and again, but instead is a sustainable habit and a rhythm of connection? We've got a bunch of helpful resources that help us to change our spiritual diet, our daily routines, to help us to come to Jesus. You may have heard of the big three, which is a resource that walks us through discipleship in our days every day and helps us to form a sustainable rhythm of connection with God. Also, there are a number of, a number of spiritual formation exercises that we're recording at the moment, so keep your eyes peeled on social media for them. This season is an opportunity to reset our daily rhythms to God-focused ones, setting us up for consistent, sustainable and daily connection with Jesus. I'd encourage you to listen to Jesus and see what he's prompting you to change in your spiritual diet. So in this passage, Jesus talks about longing for God to make wrong things right and a longing for God to help us to live right. We have an amazing opportunity to apply both of these parts by reaching out and helping those in need. And we're excited to announce that over the next two weeks, we'll be collecting items for women in Birmingham who have been affected by trafficking, exploitation and domestic violence, partnering with Heartlands Hospital, Birmingham and Solihull Women's Aid and the West Midlands Anti-Slavery Network to help these women in their time of need. We can pray for God to make all things right and we can act righteously by providing for those in need. There are four different dates when you'll be able to drop off your donations at our city centre site and you can head to our social media platforms to find out what the needs are and how you can help. Or you can click the link that's going to appear in the chat now. So what does God promise to those who hunger and thirst for righteousness? He promises that they shall be filled. Now, what does this mean? The Hebrew word for the, that Matthew uses in this passage translates like the fattening up of animals, absolutely film, filled to the brim, couldn't eat anything else. You know, just like my steakhouse experience that I talked about earlier, I was hungry and thirsty. I had the best steak I'd ever eaten and then I was full. Here, Jesus is promising that to all those who hunger and thirst, to all those who are desperate for situations to become right, for justice, for godliness and for right actions. For all those who long for these things, their hunger and thirst will be satisfied. They will be full and not be hungry and thirsty anymore. As one theologian wrote, never was there a desire to be holy, which God was not willing to gratify. And the gospel of Christ has made provision to satisfy all who truly desire to be holy. This is God's promise. 
all who hunger and thirst will be satisfied. And just as Jesus says in John chapter 4, verse 14, whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. So as we come to the end, let me ask you, what are you longing for? What is your deepest desire? As we've talked today, has there been a relationship highlighted to you that righteousness is missing from? Maybe you look at your life and you see lots of righteousness missing from your relationships. You might feel that there are a few areas in your life where no matter how hard you try, you just can't seem to get them right. The answer is to come to Jesus, whether for the first time or for the hundredth time. As you come to him, he will meet you in your struggle as you are, and you can ask for his blessing and his righteousness as you put your trust in him. If you'd like to do that for the first time, you can do that in just a second with one of our prayer team. We're gonna have a time of response in a second and two questions will appear on screen and there will be time to reflect on them and respond to God. Wherever we are, however we feel, however we relate to longing for righteousness or not, we believe that God is present here now and wants to speak to all of us. So we're gonna take a short time to reflect where we can ask, God, what are you saying to me? And how am I gonna respond? For some of us, you might feel that the appropriate response would be to request prayer and pray with one of our team. Maybe you identify with needing more righteousness in your life and you'd like to pray with someone to come to God and ask for his righteousness. If that's you, just click the live prayer button at the bottom of this video. For others, you might want to journal, write out your thoughts or follow a prompting that God gives you. For others of us, this could be an opportunity to give your life to Jesus by inviting him into your heart for the first time. If you'd like to do that, you can click the raise hand button in the chat and then just click the live prayer button as well so someone from our team can lead you in a prayer to do this. Let's all take a moment to respond and then we'll move into another time of worship. Let's respond to God.
Lord, we just thank you for your presence with us here this morning. Thank you that what you want to see is your righteousness and your justice thriving in this nation in the same way as it does in your kingdom, Lord. And we're just so grateful that because of what Jesus did on the cross for us, when you look at us, you see us as being righteous. Thank you, Lord, that it's all about your grace and mercy. It's got nothing to do with what what we do and everything to do with what you've done. We thank you, Lord, and we bless your holy name. Amen. If God has been uh, speaking to you this morning and the Holy Spirit's been stirring up your heart and you would really like to receive prayer, now is a really good time to press the live prayer button. That will take you immediately into a chat room so that you can pray with one of our team. Although it might seem a little bit odd to be praying via text, please be encouraged that God turns up at these prayers. And we've been seeing um, a sense of peace. We've been seeing prayers being answered. So um, do be encouraged to press the live prayer button now if that's what you would like to do. That's really cool. It, there are other ways that you can connect um, to our church and we, we we meet in small groups across the city. Um, so if you're not part of a small group, we'd love you to, to connect to that. So please click the connect button, uh, click on the connect button that's coming up on the screen now, or you can send an email to info at birminghamvineyard.com. We, uh, we have a daily uh, prayer times uh, that happen on Facebook Live at one o'clock and six o'clock. And we'd love you to be a part of that as well. So please just follow our social media and you'll, you'll see uh, where you can join in um, with, with, with the rest of the congregation. Yeah, for live prayer. That's really good. OK, so thank you so much for being with us here this morning. Um, if you would like to join us for our Zoom um, coffee and chat meeting, which is going to be happening right now in a few minutes um, then now is your opportunity to go and get the kettle on make yourself another cup of tea or coffee if you've got it in your house grab yourself another piece of cake we haven't got any no we don't have any but we will be joining you in a few minutes if you don't have the um, link don't forget you can request it on the live chat and someone will get it to you so I'll, I'll be seeing you in a little bit yeah and thanks for joining us this week we pray that you have a blessed week um and that you stay safe um and we look forward to seeing you next sunday yeah okay bye, bye.